Hello! It's... me. A few years ago, I made a video called Combining Mixamo Animations in Blender. And since then, I've had a number of questions about the video, and Blender 2.8 and 2.9 have been released. So this is a quick update to address the newer version of Blender, as well as some of your questions. The two main questions that I encountered were the title is a little ambiguous. What does combining Mixamo animations in Blender mean? And that I didn't solve for the dreaded translation issue. So to address the first question, what is the point of this video? The end goal here is to take the separate FBX files that you download from Mixamo and combine them into a single FBX file with multiple animation clips that you can then use to sequence animations in Unity. So for example, here we have a single FBX file with multiple F, uh, animation clips that we can use the animator controller to sequence in various ways. The second question was about the translation issue. Where I left you last, if you were to sequence your animations together, your character would walk forward, but then snap back to its starting point, and then start the next animation clip. And that's no good for anyone. So, at the end of this video, I will walk through the steps of setting up your character so that the animations merge smoothly together and don't snap back to their original starting points. This video does not cover how to sequence those animation clips together in Blender, like you've just seen, partly because that's not what I have experience in, and partly because, after a little bit of digging, it seems as though that's not as straightforward as it is in Unity or Unreal. So let's open up Blender and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is import some of the FBX files that I have from Mixamo. And just so that we're on the same page, all that I did was went over to Mixamo, selected a number of clips, downloaded each one individually with the default settings. So I have my three FBX files opened in Blender, and I have three characters here. Since the goal of this is to have only one character at the end, I'm going to shift hide two of them arbitrarily so that I have one main character that I'm going to focus on, and I'm going to call this my character. Obviously, uh, this is just the default skin, but if you have your own model or mesh that you're using, you should choose that one. Just like I did last time, I'm going to open up a oops, uh, a dope sheet editor, and make sure that the context that I'm using is the action editor. So the action editor allows you to create and manipulate a bunch of different what Blender calls actions, which correspond to in Unity animation clips. So for each action that we create, there's going to be an animation clip in Unity. I'm going to select my armature and then go over into pose mode and hit A to select all of the bones. This will expose all of the keyframes for each bone under our current action. The current action is called some combination of armature, mixamo, bloody bloody blah, which is not super helpful for us. So the first thing that I do is rename to something that's more useful. And it looks like what I have is the jump animation here. So I'm gonna call this jump, but I also like to, at the beginning of the name, add a numeric value. And this helps me order my actions in Unity. So we have uh, the jump action set up now, and now we need to go through and name all the other ones. If we click the little drop down menu next to the name, you'll have the other two animations available to you. And that's because we imported those other two FBX files, which each had an animation clip associated. Blender stores those in memory unless you access them uh, for other models as well. In fact, because these clips are stored in memory, we could, if we wanted to keep things clean, go over and delete the other characters that we brought in, and we would still have access to those animation clips. But for now, I'll leave them both in just in case I want to access them later. So I'm going to select uh, the next clip, and this looks like the dance. So I'm going to call this 01dance. And then lastly, actually, you know what? I lied. I'm going to call dance number three, and walk is number one. All right, so now we have walk, jump, and dance. 
I also find it super useful in Unity to have a T pose, and that's where the character sticks its arms out to the side. So I'm going to create a new action by clicking this little button next to the check mark that says new action when we hover over it. And this has duplicated the keyframes from dance. So I now have two dances, but actually what I want to call this is double zero pose. So now we have zero, zero pose, zero on walk, two jump and three dance. And in my pose, I'm going to select all of the keyframes uh, with all of my bones selected. So this is all of the keyframes for all of the bones and just delete them. But now we don't have any keyframes in pose, which can get a little bit confusing and cause um, uncertainty in your animation. It looks like for some reason this is still using the dance animation even though I don't have any keyframe data. So instead what I'm going to do is go to frame zero, make sure all of my bones are selected by hitting A, and then um, pressing Alt R to reset the rotation and Alt G to reset the position of each bone. And this is going to take the character back to the pose that it was modeled in, which is usually the T pose for Mixamo animations at least. And with my pose reset to the T pose, I'll press I to bring up the keyframe menu, keyframe the location, I keyframe the rotation. And that means that this pose is now locked in at a single keyframe as the T pose. And that's gonna be useful later in Unity. Right, so to summarize, what we've done is gone through each of the Mixamo animations and just renamed it, and then created a new action called Pose. That's it. One thing that I'll mention here is you might accidentally create an unwanted new action group. So if you accidentally hit that button over there, or with no action selected, you hit the new button, then you have now a duplicated pose as well as an action called action. And you don't want these cluttering up your Unity scene. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as just clicking the X mark there to delete this action. If you look at the drop down menu, that action is still there, it just has no users attached. Let's not get into Blender's user and fake user system. One way to delete unwanted actions is to go to your outliner and under the display mode, which is right next to the menu type, uh, there's a couple of different display modes. And if you haven't been through this menu before, I encourage you to look through it and see what other outliner types you have. By default in 2.8 and 9, I think it's the view layer. If we go to this display mode and select Blender File, this shows us a number of different types of objects in our world. We have all these different data types and actions right at the top. And you can see all the actions that we have. This is one way to delete the actions. If you select the action, right click, and then hit delete. Then that deletes that file. And we don't have to worry about what's using it or whether it needs a fake user, things like that. There might be other ways to delete actions. This is the way that I do it. Make sure to revert back to view layer or whatever you're comfortable with. And we are now ready to export. So I'm going to right click and select the hierarchy of my character. If I just click the top level, all I've selected is the parent of the mesh and the armature, and that's not going to export everything that I want. So I'm going to right click, select hierarchy, and that selects everything in this hierarchy. And the reason that I've done that is so that I can go to file export FBX, and under include in the top right, limit to selected objects. So this is one way to, if you have a large scene with lots of different things, lights, cameras, actions, <laughs> that you don't want coming into Unity and you only want to export the character, limit to selected objects. And because we just made sure to select our character, it will only export the character and the armature that we want. I'm going to choose a place to export. I'm going to call this, going to call this my character and then hit export file. It is possible Blender does import natively into Unity, but I like to export FBXs because it allows a little bit more control and you can update Blender files and play around without necessarily breaking your Unity project. Let's hop over into Unity and delete everything that I had from my test character. Excellent. So empty scene, this should be the same as what you see. I'm using Unity 2020.1.3. Let's bring in our FBX file just by dragging and dropping. 
So the first thing that I want to do is just make sure that I have an avatar definition for the character. This seems to differ across Unity versions, and in the latest, 2020, you need to create from this model and then hit apply. That means that you should have something called my character, whatever your character's name is, avatar within your my character object. The second thing that I'm going to do is drag my character in and then prefab it because prefabs are a godsend. Just label that as my prefab. And then to add animation clips, we need to have an animation animator controller on this character. So let's create an animator controller by going to create animator controller, call this my character animation controller. And if we open this up, we get the animator window, which is where we can sequence clips in various different ways. The easiest way to start adding clips is to just drag and drop things in. So if we drag in walk and then jump, we'll need to right click, hit make transition. And now our character should, in theory, transition from a walking to a jumping animation. Let's go over to the scene, hit play. What happens? Nothing. Why is that? because we have not yet assigned the animator controller that we've just made to our character. So let's drag the animator controller into our character. And now, fantastic, we have the transition from walk to jump. But this is the translation issue that people were bringing up in the comments. Our character moves forward and then snaps back to its original position. The problem here is that each animation clip has a start point. And the start point, unless we tell Unity otherwise, is the position of the character. So what we need is a way to update that start point as the character moves with the animation. The process for that is called applying root motion. So the idea here is to take some representation of the center of the character, the center of mass, or in the case of Mixamo, the hips, and use that, use the motion of that throughout the animation to update the transform of the character so that when the next animation starts, it starts from the updated transform. This is a two-step process. The first is to make sure that in your character import settings under rig, you select the correct root node. So this is the node that we're going to use as the center of the object. For Mixamo characters and humanoids in general, this is the hips. Depending on the hierarchy of your model, you might have to play around with this for a little bit, but for Mixamo, it's pretty easy because it's under the main parent of the character hips. Once you apply that, then you can go into your character prefab and under the animator, check the apply root motion checkbox. Once you've done that, your animation clips should blend smoothly together with each clip starting where the other left off. If we go into the animator, let's add a transition back from jump to walk and now we have an endless walk jump cycle. Where the character moves forward. Hooray. I should also mention that in the import settings of your character under the animation tab, there are a number of advanced settings that you can use to customize this root motion a little bit more. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but just for an example, if we had a walk cycle that we didn't want to update the position of the character along the XY plane, for example, we could bake the XY movement and then this is not going to apply to the root motion. So if we do that, hit apply, now our character will snap back even though root motion is applied. This could be helpful if your character is jumping and there's a little bit of a height offset and you don't want that to accumulate. I'm going to undo that. All right, I hope that's helped. Uh, that's the end of the content, but I did promise to address some of the other questions. So let's do a quick fire round of questions from the last video or comments. You should redo the video. Okay. I was hoping you'd explain how to combine them all within Blender. Right, so as I alluded earlier, that's a little bit more problematic because the idea behind this is to create re short repeatable sequences that are used in some sort of game engine. Blender is not necessarily built to do that. So when you are posing things in Blender, you're posing those bones in world space, which means that if you wanted a character to walk forward a number of times, you would have to repeat that and cre manually create that offset. Um, as I said earlier, I'm not super fluent on how to do that. 
But if you have any idea how to do that, please let me know in the comments because that does sound pretty useful on the Blender side. I was looking for a way to do this in Maya. This is misleading. Well, I hope I cleared it up. If there is still confusion, please let me know in the comments. I will be happy to do another video at some point in the future. If I've missed anything, please let me know. Otherwise, take care.